Hillary Clinton. Data mining in the targeted and digital leave. campaign that helped bring Donald Trump to the Oval Office. France's presidential election overshadowed by allegations of fake news, ending in a triumphant Emmanuel Macron pledging to regulate the internet. And a Brexit win largely attributed by its victors to a secretive Canadian firm that specialises in developing highly tailored Facebook advertisements. The rise of digital campaigning is a new political reality facing developed democracies. And in many senses, it was brought to the fore here in the UK, a peachy dish for new techniques during Britain's EU referendum. I'm Reuters Jacob Greaves in Westminster, where in a series of reports, we've been looking at the challenges bearing down on an international symbol of democracy. The new battleground for your vote is online, and it's often a no-holds-barred free-for-all. We can all be targeted more easily and directly than ever before. Now, a party election broadcast by the Labour Party. Long gone are the days of tightly regulated TV ad buys. The door knock has been usurped by data. Now campaign material can pop up on your favourite social media feed based around your likes, dislikes, location and personal information. While the volume and financing of traditional media campaigning in the UK is tightly regulated, no official body is keeping track of digital messaging. No one knows uh, what's being said and it means that someone who's willing to spend huge amounts uh, in this way on artificial intelligence, on the botnet, uh, can buy an election. Official spending figures for Britain's parliamentary elections in June are yet to be made public. They're expected to reach into the millions and show a dramatic rise for all parties on digital spending. But you don't need a fortune to make a difference. The digital space is something few political parties can afford to ignore now. Momentum, a grassroots movement tied to Labour, attributed it to much of their success in the last general election. I'm Reuters reporter Jacob Greaves here, where Momentum is mobilising already for the next national vote. They've proven an ability to impact the national political debate with a budget in the low thousands. We managed to reach during election periods uh, at least half of the UK face population and then we got video views from almost a third. For groups like this, the internet is the great equaliser. Nobody ever helped me out. This momentum attack ad reached two million people in just 24 hours. But detractors have dubbed these dark ads, an implied association with an often illicit dark web. Close down NATO! All major UK parties employed them in the recent election, messaging sent from a campaign to an individual that unless shared or reposted may never be seen by anyone else. They are almost impossible to monitor or control. But they're far from the only digital tool being deployed. In the fallout from Britain's recent election, Conservative elites spoke of learning from Momentum. In turn, Momentum has picked up ideas and staffers from Bernie Sanders' campaign for the Oval Office in the US. On the day of Britain's recent general election, Momentum managed to reach 400,000 people with a viral WhatsApp message. We made it so it's really easy that you send a message to WhatsApp and say, click here to send this to five more of your WhatsApp friends. Here at a so-called hackathon, they're also rolling out what they call a digital network. It aims to help mobilise supporters, particularly in marginal areas. The dot-com campaign trail is reshaping politics as we know it. Britain's parliament is getting a much-needed renovation, but some say the democracy it represents is meanwhile crumbling. Paul Flynn is a seasoned Labour MP who's tabled questions on whether the UK's election watchdog has the teeth to police modern elections. His verdict is damning. The Electoral Commission uh, are dabbling with the minnows in the, uh, the, in the shallows, well, the big fat uh, salmon of corruption, and go sailing by unhindered. You know, the, 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 it's not appropriate. It's no longer fit for purpose. And the UK's number one election watchdog doesn't have a very modern remit. The Electoral Commission regulates political spending, funding and fraud. It also has some say over political TV and radio broadcasts. That's it. It doesn't touch other content, particularly that related to more modern campaigning techniques. While its back is turned, spending is going up and electioneering is changing shape.
2015 is the last UK election where spending has been made available. Then, just $1.1 million went on TV campaign broadcasts of a total $48.6 million. In the EU referendum, just 0.9% of the total spend went on this. Now, they think they've won the argument. Did you hear them yesterday? Vote Leave, the official campaign to exit the EU, set the benchmark for digital campaign spending. Every week, we send £350 million pounds to Brussels. Most of their budget went on social media, but also data analytics, which allows for highly targeted ads. Serbia and Turkey join the EU. In this new world, data rules. Political parties will buy and merge um, and lease data from as many different kinds of providers as they can. Some of it's open source, some of it they've collected themselves some of it they'll get from, um, from commercial providers. And campaigners are going to great lengths to get their hands on personal information. Vote Leave set up a football-based online competition with prize money in the run-up to the referendum. And did you use the uh, data of people who entered into that competition? Uh, did we use it for? For future campaigns and advertising and targeted ads. Uh, yes, the data was used for the referendum campaign, as was made clear in the competition. We asked to speak to the Electoral Commission about the current digital campaigning methods. In a reply, they said we are currently reviewing the administration of the recent general election, including the types of campaigning undertaken by political parties. In a report published last year by the Commission into the 2015 general election, they conceded the ability to fully identify social media spending by campaigners is limited. In reality, it's not even reported separately. It means parties can circumvent strict local spending caps, contesting marginal seats with larger national budgets. But the Electoral Commission is in many ways a bystander. It cannot give itself new powers. That decision must be taken by Parliament, meaning lawmakers would have to give outsiders more powers to snoop on their campaigning. We've got our country back! Brexit, Trump, Macron, Merkel and the UK's recent election have brought issues in policing digital campaigning to the fore. But can any of them be fixed? Good morning, everybody. I think the Electoral Commission or, or agencies like that need, need more powers to be more flexible and immediate so that as campaign techniques uh, evolve and technology and communication changes, they're not re requiring a change of legislation going through the parliamentary system to act. So may, maybe more tools to issue, more fines for parties that refuse to disclose information. For reformers like Darren, regulators are failing to grasp the bigger picture trying to solve the problems of past elections instead of future votes. And all this comes as rapid, technology-driven change means campaigning tactics outpace any regulatory updates. And all of this is uniquely British. Online is borderless. Be it fake news in France or the town in Macedonia that proved a fake news factory for the US presidential elections. Not to mention the same data mining firm that helped Donald Trump popping up in Kenya's recent vote. As such, any solutions might need to be global. The kind of techniques that are being used and the rules that regulators use to respond to them is actually something for international cooperation. The counter-argument is audiences are becoming more sophisticated and discerning. I think most people are quite hardened to online ads. They click less on online ads than they used to. I think the actual advertising industry is actually quite worried that online ads are having less and less impact. So on the one hand, I think the use of data, the use of personalisation, the use of targeting is worrying and we need to understand what's happening and we need to regulate it. I actually don't think that that's the, the explanation for the outcome of those elections. Huzzah! Independence Day! Digital has undoubtedly helped in some of the recent major political shocks. But even if you think tighter controls might be needed, don't hold your breath. There's an awful lot going on in Parliament at the moment. Brexit is consuming all the resources inside that building. It's all about just get, getting through the next two years, getting all the legislation done that's necessary for that. And that means there's no time uh, and no political will to carry out something like electoral reform. They've tried it in the past. It's very difficult to do. You need to get all three parties on board if you're really going to do it. And, and there just isn't that movement at the moment. And globally, it would take the type of coordination rarely seen on the international stage. The toughest job for politicians might not be finding a fix, but the parliamentary time and appetite to see it through.